Hey, Jared Borkowski here from SoundGuitarLessons.com, and this video is for you if you've ever seen or heard another guitar player playing, whether it's online, in real life, anywhere, and it had a negative impact on you small or big, got you down, something like that. Of course, I'm talking about us comparing ourselves to other people. This is something that we all are susceptible to as humans. And yes, I've had my fair share of uh, this negative feeling, this discouraged feeling from uh, comparing myself to other guitarists. And I found over the years a way to think about um, my relationship with the guitar and a couple questions to ask myself when this happens to me that has completely eliminated this problem for me. It's pretty amazing. Uh, so I wanna share this with you. It's very simple. Um, and that's what we're gonna talk about in this video. I hope you'll find it beneficial. I am inserting this uh, in between a two part series that I'm doing about jazz guitar scale improvisation. And so next week, I'm still working on that second part video. So next week I will uh, post my part two of the scale workout improvisation over a Miles Davis tune. It's gonna be a great lesson. Uh, but this one here, just want to give you some encouragement, some kind of uh, perspective shifting stuff I really like to talk about. I talk about practice strategy and practice psychology a lot. I have a whole playlist with videos on that topic. I'll put that link to that playlist in the description, but let's get into the main point of this video. So like I said already, this has happened to me quite a bit through my many, many years of playing guitar, and I've discovered a few things about it. Uh, when I get down, discouraged, this can happen naturally too, but so often it's triggered by uh, hearing music, seeing music, seeing other people play, jamming with other people, being exposed to something, and comparing ourselves to where someone else is at, what they can do, how good they sound, um, all of this kind of uh, all of this kind of stuff There's this internal turmoil that we can go through and it can really really throw us off and if and perhaps you've experienced this before but it can throw us off in a way that we really would we really should be trying to avoid because it can take sometimes weeks or months to recover from it and find uh, maybe a more pure version of why we're playing music uh, after getting discouraged because the discouraged feeling from uh, being exposed to someone else's playing is uh, a little bit on the shallow level, right? It's on the surface level of what we get out of having music in our lives. And it may take the wind out of our sails. We might not practice for a little while. We might not play for a little while and then come back to realizing how much we really love this, how much we, we need to do it for ourselves and for our soul and for, you know, for how, for enjoying the process. Then we get back into it and then we hit, start thinking, hey, I think I could do this. And the whole cycle kind of starts over again. This has happened to me uh, many times, as I've said. One observation about it uh, before I share how I kind of solved it for myself is that this is a good thing if it's happening in a way, because what what I've noticed for myself anyway is that this discouraged feeling tends to only happen if I am really trying, if I am really, if I really care enough that I am attempting to improve my playing and attempting to go towards music and uh, really giving it a shot. Uh, whereas we can often uh, make an excuse for someone else being, you know, better than us or sounding amazing or, you know, doing something we want to do. If we're not doing it yet, if it's just in our head, if we think, yeah, someday, oh, I'm someone that's, I'm someday going to work on guitar. I'm someday going to, you know, give my actual full effort to that. When we give our full effort to a pursuit like the guitar, which is such a long game, it's such a slow process, and we have to uh, take it little by little, that's when it's easy to get discouraged because when we're just thinking about wanting to do it, it seems so easy. It seems so simple. Oh, sure. I'm going to start practicing a lot someday. Once we're practicing a lot and we realize how hard it is and how slow it is and how things don't come easily, um, then we can start to wonder, hey, wait, am I someone that doesn't have what it takes? Am I someone that um, it is different than these other people? And, and maybe I shouldn't be playing guitar, but I, you know, we we're attracted to it because we love it so much. We have something in us. We have music in us. And then the reality of working on it is just an absolute um, slog, <laughs> sometimes anyway. It can also be a, an absolute joy, even when it's slow. Um, so it's a good sign in a way, because it means that we're really identifying with um, with working on it. And it means we're not avoiding working on it. Okay, so that's, that's one thing that is kind of a good thing. Here's what I started to do that just took care of this problem instantly. 
Um, and I had it happening so much to me. I was on this roller coaster of uh, comparison with other people. It would be daily even. And the only thing that would calm me down is really putting some practice in and realizing, no, I sound okay. Like, I feel, this feels good. I feel like me. And then I would be exposed to jamming or going, seeing live music or online or whatever. And feel like, oh, but no, but that's the real thing. They're doing the real thing. And I'm not as good as that. Right. So a lot of this can be cognitive distortion, of course. But here's what I started asking myself. I don't know how it came to me, but I, I just explicitly when this happens now, always, uh, if I see something, hear something that I'm like, oh, they're, they're so good. That's so good. That's amazing. I can't do that. Uh, I just ask myself this. Have I practiced that? that thing right now that I'm comparing myself to that they're doing that I feel like I can't do. Have I practiced that exact specific thing? Some flashy, you know, sweeping licks or something or some tapping thing or some, I don't know, I'm just uh, flashy examples are easy ones to say, but uh, some style of music, you know, some finger style thing, but you've never worked on finger style. Have you actually practiced that, that thing? And the answer for me 99% of the time was actually, no, no, I haven't practiced that. Uh, if we practice literally anything, we will improve at that thing. Now getting to some world-class level, that's a whole different thing. And we probably shouldn't be worrying about that, but it's very interesting to have this negative reaction to something and then realize, oh, but I don't even work on that. And so the question number two to ask is, do I want to practice that, that thing right now that I'm, that I'm witnessing, you know, I would get thrown off by someone like playing piano and I'm like, Oh, they're so talented. They're so good. I'm like, wait, I don't know. I don't practice piano at all. I just create this idea in my mind, this narrative that like, Oh, this must mean that there's some natural musician that I'm not. And I have to work really hard. We don't know how hard they have to work at it, you know? And so I'm just like, have I practiced that? Have I practiced, you know, that etude on the piano or that technique or Whatever it is, you, you, you know, someone doing some amazing, it could be tangential to guitar, some amazing recording quality thing. Like, well, have you worked on recording yourself and getting the quality to sound good? And when we're comparing ourselves in this way, for me, at least, I found that so often the answer is no, I haven't practiced that. So question number two is, do I want to practice that? Do I want to play that? And also very often the answer is no, because if I did, I probably would have been doing some of it at least by now. And if the answer is yes, then it, you know, can change your direction and say, Oh, I'm going to start working on that. It was because that would be the thing to do, right? Start taking action on it. But so often the answer is, I don't really want to work on that, which then opens up a can of worms because it's very interesting. Well, if I don't want to work on that, if I don't want to practice that, if that doesn't inspire me to actually work on, then I probably, I don't actually want the result of it either. We don't just want the end result of being able to play something. We have to want the day-to-day -day work that it takes to get to that end result. And if we like that process, we inevitably are going to end up being the person that is good at something because we actually just like working on it. So it's crazy. So often I'm like, no, I don't, I don't want to end. I don't want to work on that. Well, then I don't want the end result. So then, you know, peel the onion more and realize, well, what am I comparing myself to actually? Probably just the fact that this person is getting attention for it and you know, on some core level, I want some attention to, uh, probably the fact that they're just going for it. They're doing something. They're putting themselves out there. That always makes us feel alive, right? You're taking a risk. You're performing. Not that we all have to perform, but they're going for it. They're doing something and they're exposing it. And that's a feeling of, like, oh, that, that makes us, when we do that kind of thing, it makes us feel alive. And someone else is doing that. Oh, they're living their dream. And I'm not just watching it on my phone. You know, these are subconscious things, emotional things that can be happening, but it starts to make you hopefully at least reflect on them when we ask ourselves these questions. So overall, what this does is not just nip this negative spiral in the bud and, and stop it and keep us in hopefully somewhat of a more positive outlook in terms of our guitar journey. Um, and it will keep us playing and practicing and keep that barrier to entry open so we're not just quitting and starting and quitting and starting and having that roller coaster experience. But things get a little deeper and we get more conscientious about what we're practicing. We get more intentional about what we're practicing. It kind of 
cleans the slate a little bit because if you can prune off all these things that are distracting us, these you know shiny objects in other directions, but that we don't actually want. We don't actually want to work on that thing, but it's just appealing because it's getting attention or you know whatever we discovered about ourselves in the process there. Um, when we reflect on it in this way, and again, I'm just speaking for myself. This is my own experience, and I find it helpful. To, sometimes I share it with other people, and they find it helpful, so I'm sharing it with you. But uh, the clarity of what we actually want, and therefore what we should actually be practicing, and therefore what we improve at, and how rewarding it is, uh, comes into focus a little more by asking ourselves these questions. So just that one simple thread, pulling that little thread of, have I ever actually practiced that? And then, do I want to? Um, can create all of this clarity. Because then you can have this more conscious decision and react less to it, emotion, less emotionally to it. This conscious decision that that's not something I'm into right now, at least. This could always change, right? But next time you're exposed to someone doing that thing, you've kind of used your prefrontal cortex to label that as like, oh yeah, that's not something I need to compare myself to because I already had that experience before and realized oh, that's not what I want. So um, it very much helps our clarity. And then when we show up to practice, we kind of know what our goal is. We do this enough and we get more and more and more uh, of, a, of a compass pointing us towards uh, that, those areas that we actually are uh, most nourished by in our music. If we ask ourselves this question, have I practiced that? And the answer is yes. Uh, I find that most often if the answer is yes, instead of being negatively impacted by it, I'm, I actually find that something is inspiring. So if I'm working on something every single day uh, and or often and really, you know, I really care about it. And then I'm exposed to someone who does that thing at a, at a high level because I'm on that path, I'm in alignment with it a little better. I often don't feel the negative feeling of comparing myself to it. Instead, I feel inspired by it. So I'm like, oh, that's someone doing the thing I love. I'm working on that. And you get ideas and you, you think, oh, I'm going to practice that tomorrow because you're actually in it. It's the thing you're actually doing. So that's why I said 99% of the time, this question just takes care of this issue. Uh, because for me, if it is in alignment with what I'm working on and what I want, um, it's it feels more of a positive feeling. And just remember, again, if we practice literally anything, we will improve at that thing. It's such a fun idea to remember. It's literally anything you practice, you will improve at that. Are you going to become the best at it? Almost certainly no, because there's always someone better. Uh, are you going to be the worst at it? Also, almost certainly no. So we have to be in, in our own lane, put the blinders on, you know, find what is the most meaningful to us moment by moment, day to day, these things change. But just remember that the joy of improving and uh, working towards a goal and expressing ourselves and just showing up and, and wanting to be alive for it is the best part, is the best part. And I love this idea, even something that I feel like is my biggest weakness um, in music to work on it, really actually practice it. I notice improvement and any amount of improvement, I think, no matter where I am in some comparison chart of other people, any amount of improvement uh, feels amazing. It just feels incredible. I was uh, one of my, I've talked on my channel a lot about um, ear training and some singing and stuff, stuff like that. That's always been huge weakness of mine in music. It just comes slower. I started working on that stuff and being aware of it way later in the game. Other stuff, I, I have strengths on guitar like technique and the physical coordination and and theory knowledge and fretboard layout that stuff is all at a much higher level for me but my ears are are um way below uh all that other stuff and i would love to catch up with it and i work on it here and there sometimes really seriously sometimes take a break from it well the other day i was working with an ear training app and doing some of my own ear training exercises um that I do on the guitar. And I and with the app, at least, I passed this level that I have been working on for like nine months. This one exercise, one exercise, which was identifying uh, inversions of dominant seventh chords played harmonically within a certain amount of time, just to share the detail there. But nine months of not being able to pass that exercise, like getting it right a certain amount of times in a row. And and what was it? Two days ago, I, uh, I passed it. And 
Just saying, if you work on something, you improve at it. If you practice, even if it's the thing you think you are the worst at in the world, um, and that feeling of passing that level, for example, and this happens to me all the time with any little improvements, you know, getting a lick down, <laughs> getting something, anything, uh, no matter where you are compared to other people, that feeling is the best every time. It's this. It's it's not a better feeling when you're because you're playing better. The feeling of moving on, growing, learning. It's, it's that feeling doesn't get more potent because we get better at guitar or because we are working on something at a higher level. The feeling of improvement is always, uh, the feeling of growing and learning and practicing. And it's, it's the thing to get hooked on. Cause if you get hooked on that, you're just, you're off to the races and, and, and flying. So it's sharing my own little anecdote there. Whatever you work on, you get better at. And if you get better at it a little bit, you understand it more intimately. And then if you're exposed to someone else doing that thing, you have more context for uh, how it can inform what you want, what you're inspired by, what you actually are going to take action on out of music. If you want to play any jazz chord uh, that exists, say you open up the real book or lead sheet or whatever, any tune, and you want to play any jazz chord uh, with just a handful of simple shapes, actually only eight shapes that it takes total, I have a free little method booklet that is called Any Jazz Chord. It's very effective and uh, you can download it totally for free. There's a PDF for it in the link in the top of the description, or you can go to soundguitarlessons.com slash any jazz chord. If you don't know how to play any jazz chord of any tune and you're into playing jazz, uh, it's a very worth worthwhile uh, resource to get. So I hope you get it and uh, utilize it and benefit from it like a lot of other people have. I post a new lesson video every single week uh, next week. I'm doing part two of my jazz scale series, and it's going to be a really awesome lesson connecting scales uh, within chord progressions, improvising. See you there. Hopefully take care. Thanks for watching and happy practicing.